Hola, hi everyone. I've been practicing my Spanish today. I hope you're having a great day and welcome to Sorel Bea Yoga. Today we're going to do, be doing another spinal back relief healthy spine flow. But first, get comfortable on your back and I'm going to share a little bit from this book called The Yamas and Niyamas by Deborah Adele and I really, really like it. So get comfortable. You're welcome to close your eyes. And I am going to share a little bit that really resonated with me today. So the Sanskrit word adhikara, adhikara, means the right to know or the right to have. This word challenges us to the reality that if we want something, then we better grow the competency required to have it. Like the story above, that she told a little story up here. We can dream and wish all we want, but we only get what we have the competency to have and keep. And then um, a little bit more is building our arikara, arikara is plugging our holes by growing our competency in the area of our desires. And I, I like this idea because a lot of times, you know, we all do it where we want something really bad. We want to be something, we want to do something, but we aren't really working towards it. We're just kind of waiting for it to happen. Or I have, a, I have a lot of, you know, different people that come into my life and they're like, oh, I've always wanted to do yoga. I need to do yoga. I should do yoga. And it's like, well, try it. You know, it's not just going to randomly just happen. You're not going to randomly just start doing yoga. You have to start somewhere. And so with any of our desires, any of our goals, any of these things that we want to achieve or be, it requires us to take the steps necessary to get there. And that way, you know, the universe trusts us more with that responsibility of whatever it is, whoever we want to be, whatever it is that we're going towards. And I think, I think it's just a beautiful thing to, to keep in mind that every little step really does count. And in our yoga practice today, there may be things that you can't do today, and that's okay. You're here. You're making the, the, the you're doing the effort. You're, you're here. So taking one more deep breath in through the nose. Let it go. Fluttering the eyes open. Starting to take your right ankle into the inside of the left thigh. So you're taking a tree pose here on your back. From here, you're going to cross the right ankle over the left ankle. And then you're going to reach your arms up overhead. Left hand catches right wrist. And we're going to turn ourselves into a little banana to the left. So you're creating space in the right rib cage. Keep dialing both hips and sit bones down. Then come back through center, uncross your ankles, bring the left foot to the inside of the right thigh. So you're having a tree pose here on your back. And then take the left ankle, cross it over the right ankle. Right hand catches left wrist, and we take a little banana shape over to the right keeping both shoulders and hips down. Feeling and breathing into that left side of the body. And then coming back through center, uncrossing the ankles, lift your feet up, knees up, and then hands reach up towards the sky. So we're gonna pretend we're like a puppeteer here and our legs are the puppets. So take your hands if you're holding two strings. And left hand's in control of left leg, right hand's in control of right leg. Now from here, really dial in and hone in on lowering your tailbone and the middle part of your back on the mat. So you're nice and rooted. Now left arm's going to reach forward, left ankle and left leg's going to hover. And switch, right hand reaches forward, right leg forward. Keep it going for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hold both at the bottom. Reach your fingers towards your feet. Lift your head. Lift your shoulders. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Let it go. Here we go, rock and roll, coming all the way to your tabletop. Take as many rocks as you need. 
Good. Inhale, lifting the heart, lifting the chest. Exhale, round. Inhale, lift. Exhale, round, adding anything extra that you need. Maybe stretching in the wrists and the palm. Letting this be a little bit of organic movement. Whatever feels good for the body, the heart, the soul. Okay. Coming back to our tabletop. Find your downward facing dog. Pedal it up. Really rotating biceps outwards, creating space for your ears, relaxing the back of the neck and the head. Gaze forward, step or hop to the front of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up, reach up. Exhale, Tadasana. Good. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up, reach up. Exhale, Tadasana, hands by your sides. Inhale, this time we're going to find our chair pose. I know, so early, right? You're getting right into it. If arms are already tired or any shoulder injuries, just bring the hands forward or rest them down, heart center. We've got options here. All that really matters here is we're tucking our tail. And see if you can see your big toes. Wherever you're at, sink a little lower. <laughs> Breathe. Good. Exhale, stand up. We're going to take a big step with our left leg, finding your warrior one. So hips are nice and square, really bending into that front knee. Interlace your palms at your lower back. Inhale, lift the heart, lift the chest. If this feels uncomfortable, just grab opposite forearm. Exhale, humble your warrior. Think of crown of head going forward rather than at a diagonal. Soften the back of the neck and the head. Press through that back heel for three, two, one. Rise on up. And if you have a block or blocks, I recommend grabbing them. We're going to pivot into skandasana. So you're going to be bending into that back knee, right toes lift up. And if you have your block or blocks, just bringing them to frame out this left foot. And we're going to work here. So the arms and the hands and blocks are going to stay rooted. But we're going to work on just straightening and bending our left leg. Good. Keep hugging the shoulder blades together. Strong core. Three, two, one. From here, move the block out of your way. We're going to pivot facing the back of our mat. Find your crescent lunge. Back heel is lifted, really coming onto the balls of the back toes because we're going to get a little momentum going forward. Good. Draw the belly button back. Hands to heart center. Find your warrior three. Lifting back leg up. Breathe. Try to square the hips. Sometimes I like to even bring one or both of my hands to my hips and my lower back and kind of feel which one is lifting. And literally with my hands, press it down. That way I can feel it square. Right leg's going to step next to left leg. Inhale, chair. Exhale, stand up. Now we have to do the other side, going back around, making a little circle here, or half circle. Inhale, chair pose. Whatever feels comfortable on the hands. And we're through that little thrust, so tailbone pointing is pointing down. And rise up. Stepping back with our right leg, find your warrior one, Virabhadrasana one. Hips are square. Press through that back heel. Exhale, interlace your palms at your lower back. Take the opposite grip. It'll feel a little funky. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, humble. Crown ahead, driving forward. You can even press your shoulder and leg together. And then press into that back foot a little bit more. Bend into the front knee. Breathe. For three, two, one, we're going to rise up, grabbing your block if you have it. 
pivoting, so now we're bending into our right leg, lifting left toes up, finding skandasana, and the opposite leg. So now we're bending and we're back at the front of our mat, and just starting to straighten and bend. Remember, hands blocks are rooted, so they're not lifted. Working here, just kind of wiggling it out. Three, two, lift the heart. One, and moving the block out of the way, we're gonna pivot so we're facing the front of the mat. Back heel lift, crescent lunge. You can always come onto that back knee if your legs are feeling a little tired right now. But really put a lot of weight now is gonna shift into our front leg. And so if you're here, now we're gonna lift back up. Hands to heart center, find your warrior three. Pressing through that back heel. Your toes, try to point them to the right. It almost feels like they're going crooked, but they really are angling down. Lift the heart. And stand on two legs. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, tadasana. So if you'd like to do that one again, I recommend it. Maybe even going a little faster when breath to movement. And let that kind of be your Surya Namaskar B, your Warrior B or your sun salutation B flow. Just a little take on it. From here, take a big breath in. Exhale, fold. Halfway lift. Beautiful, plant the palms, step back. Option here to take a flow if you'd like. If you're not sure what that is, just take a downward facing dog for right now. And then we're all gonna come onto our knees. Once you're done with your flow. So coming onto your knees, trying to figure out which way I'm gonna face here. And we're gonna start with sending left leg out off your mat. Plant the foot down, inhale, rise up. Exhale, left arm crawls down, left leg, find your gates pose. Really take that top arm back behind you. Inhale, rise up. Take your right hand either to your lower back or like you're sliding it into your back pocket or the back thigh for a half camel, baby camel. Back bending, lifting the heart. Three, two, one. We're going to bring our hands back down. Keep your legs just how they are. Start to press the hips back for a variation of child pose with a straight leg. Breathing here, softening the neck, having lots of energy throughout the arms, still pressing through the palms and the fingers. Inhale, we're going to come back up to that tabletop with our left leg still extended. Listen carefully. From here, you're going to curl your right toes if they aren't already. Lift the right knee up so you're in a funky variation of downward facing dog with this left leg out to the side still. From here, bring all the weight into the right foot. Lift left leg up so you're in a three-legged dog. And take some circles here. Going one way, the other. And then draw it in knee to nose. And step left foot in between your hands, lowering back knee down. From here, we're going to rise up. Find your low lunge, Anjane Asana. Breathe. Squeezing the glute. Tucking the tail here, strong core, strong legs. If you have your blocks, get them and bring them a little bit in front of your front foot. If not, that's okay. I'll demo it with one block. From here, you're going to lift back knee up. And we're going to bring our weight forward, finding our standing L. Lift right leg up. Keeping hips square for now. Breathing. Lift it a little higher, strong glutes. Then take that right foot and we're going to step it behind our left leg. Catch your balance. From here, we're going to rise up, reach up. Left hand catches right wrist, taking a side body stretch. Open the heart though. Notice if it's going to want to cave in, open it. Pulling the right arm back. Hands come back to heart center. We're going to lean 
forward, back leg's gonna lift up, warrior three. Feel the strength, flower your standing toes, and then right foot steps next to left, rise up. Exhale, fold. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold, plant your palms, your choice, take a flow, any kind of flow, or we're all gonna just meet back in downward facing dog. Take your time if you need to take a child's pose or get a sip of water, please do. And when you're ready, we're gonna meet on our knees. Extending right leg out. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, crawl right hand down, right leg. Left arm sweeps up and over for variation of our gates pose. Maybe taking top hand this time around to the back of the head. Like you're a, a beautiful Renaissance painting here, because you are. I see you. There's the cutest little hummingbird right up here. Inhale, sweep up. Left hand comes either to the lower back, like you're sliding it into your pocket, or to the back thigh. Right arm sweeps up and over, taking that variation of our camel. Engage the back. It's a deep back bend and heart opener here for three, two, one. Hands come down. Keeping your legs just how they are, press the hips back. Release the neck and head. Just a variation of child pose. Finding some softness, reconnecting with the breath. Inhale, come up onto your hands. We're gonna take that interesting variation of downward facing dog. So leave the, the leg that's kicked out just how it is. Curl your left toes if they aren't already curled and start to lift left leg up, straightening it. So you're in this, I don't know, like horizontally, diagonally, something down dog. We need a name for this. Comment with some names. Release the neck and head. And then bring all the weight into the left foot. Sweep right leg up, three-legged dog. Bend the knee, take some circles. Get a little jiggy. <laughs> and then knee to nose. Gently step right foot in between your hands. You might need to pull it up there. That's okay. Use your hand. Inhale, rise up, low lunge. Anjane Asana. Really focusing in on the insides of the thighs. Imagine you're squeezing a block there. You're holding it. Put a soft face, quiet mind. And then right hand catches left wrist. We're going to take a side bend to the right. Okay, hands are going to come down. If you used blocks on the other side, grab your blocks. Bringing them in front of the right foot. If you only have one, bringing it in front of the right foot. You can play with your height, whatever feels good. Lifting back knee up. Lift back leg up. Find that standing L. Press through that standing leg and then use your left glute and left thigh. Lift that left leg up. Good. Pull the navel up. Lots of up here. <laughs> We're going to gently step left foot behind right. Catch your balance. Inhale, sweep the hands up. Exhale, right hand catches left wrist, side body stretch. Coming back through center, hands to heart center. Take your back leg, your left leg, lifting it up, balancing here, warrior three. Flex your foot, press through that heel. And stand on two feet. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your palms, step or flow back. We're going to meet in our downward facing dog. And 
and then drop the knees down and come onto a seat. Stretch out the legs. So from here, I want you to bend the right knee. So like the foot is gonna to come to the inside of the left thigh, but then take your left leg and bend that as well. So you're in like a double diamond shape. Then you're gonna take your arms and your torso and turn to the right. And if you have a bolster or a pillow, maybe grab that, place them here. You're gonna come down. This is a beautiful restorative shape because if you have a bolster, because you can place it right here. But it's still really nice even if you don't. And if this is very tight to come onto your forearms, you can stay up and just feel like you can't relax as much like this, but that's okay. Just soften the head and the neck. And if turning so much like this is, doesn't feel good, you can always come horizontal. And it's, a, it's a restorative shape. It's passive. It's chill, chill time now. I'm going to take five breaths here, maybe closing the eyes. If you feel comfortable, you don't have to. Slowing down, maybe turning the lights down. Two more breaths. Last one. Inhale, coming up. You can just take your double diamond legs and pivot so that they're turned to the left. Oh, I got a nice tack there in my back. And then turn to the left. This side might be different, going horizontal or coming all the way. So now you're facing the front of your mat, if that makes sense. You can look at me too. It's kind of a funky shape to get into. But once you're in it, you're like, oh, okay, this feels really good. I love it right now because it feels so good on my lower back. But it's, like I said, it's kind of a passive shape, so it's not intense. There's no pinching. There shouldn't be pinching anyways, but there's no, like, it's not a crazy stretch. It's a bit more of one that you could hang out here, maybe even <laughs> read your book. And also let me know too if it's not the most comfortable one. I'll give some other suggestions of what to do or how to get into this better. Five more breaths. Feel the twisting of the belly and the soaring of your intestines, your digestive system. All that good stuff. I'm coming back to that word, that arikara. The right to know or the right to have. When you're done with that final breath, come out of it facing back up. And we're just going to slowly come all the way onto your mat. Give yourself a hug here. Taking any last minute movements your body needs, maybe a happy baby. Or maybe just drawing one knee into your chest at a time. If spinal twists help you feel complete, please take those. So many different ways to take spinal twists. You can really just drop the knees to one side. Any which way in <laughs> the legs. And do what you got to do to get into a comfortable resting shape on your back or on your belly or on your side. And you did it. So taking some deep breaths here, closing the eyes, feeling the body, feeling the warmth, feeling your heartbeat. And I'm going to leave you with this. The lifelong task of shaping ourselves into someone of value. So how do we do that? We do that by our arikara. 
the right to know, the right to have, by gaining our competency or um, improving our competency, by reaching for those things that we want to reach for and making the actions necessary to be responsible for them, have the responsibility, have the universe trust us with whatever it is that we're searching for, that we're wanting, whatever yoga pose it is, whatever feeling it is, whatever relationship it is, whatever it is. We have to take those first steps necessary to get there. And by joining me in these practices and doing this yoga, you're definitely taking some steps there. So as you lay here, maybe thinking about what it is that you do desire, that you're building towards, that you're wanting to know and wanting to have. And how are you taking the steps necessary to get there? Take a deep breath here. Open your mouth, let it go. Stay here as long as you'd like. And I hope you join me next week for another flow. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day. Namaste.